Hello boys and girls, Here, it's me again, Emil, and uh, we have uh, the laptop here, um, which uh, I installed OpenBSD on. This is part two in a video series about OpenBSD. And now we're going to configure some stuff. As you recall, we already did uh, DUAS. And uh, we put uh, this in here. So, uh, yeah, so we could uh, sudo of uh, do, do as, uh, com uh, do as commands as root. But uh, as you remember, we also enabled the SSH uh, server. So I want to switch to my, uh, my recording desktop. Uh, and it's uh, because um, this has the default X background. So I am probably a, a horrible uh, pixelated mess because of video compression. Uh, so yeah, so let's switch to that and then uh, we can uh, yeah configure some stuff, install some packages and uh, get a get a desktop going. So uh, let's see, I have to turn this off. Oh. Here we go. So this is the machine. As you can see, it has uh, it has uh, OpenBSD 7.4 installed. We did uh, we did the install in a VM just to show you because uh, <coughs> you couldn't see the install on the on the on the on the on the capture device. So to show you how OpenBSD is installed, I, I did it in the VM. But this is actual hardware. Let's test if do as works. Let's uh, install NeoFetch. It should be pretty quick. So if I do a pkj info, oh, you would see the firmware and the packages that it needed for NeoFetch. It's uh, Intel video. IWX is the Wi-Fi, which we'll probably do also. Um, the rest is uh, all VMM is virtualization. It enabled that by default, but we might play we, we might play with that as well. It is uh, also new for me, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's move this a bit closer. Oops. Uh, so that's that's also new for me. So uh, we might play with that. Uh, so yeah, now we have uh, NeoFetch, and let's uh, run NeoFetch. Well, let's uh, reset the terminal so we get uh, normal color. So here we go. This is uh, uh, this is uh, well NeoFetch. It's a it's a laptop uh, in 12th gen Intel. Uh, the shell is KSH. We might. Uh, Change that to CSH. I'll show you that as well. But uh, first, let's uh, get a get a desktop up and running because we already have Xorg, uh, but it's called Chino Cara. Uh, I've been thinking about using uh, XFCE. Let's see if I can find my notes. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. Um, And then XFC extras. Uh, maybe let, if, uh, pro when we have this up and running, we'll look into getting uh, DWM or Awesome WM up and running. And uh, <coughs> also, uh, uh, right now, the window manager I'm using on my workstation is Shakutal, which uh, doesn't work on OpenBSD yet. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. So we'll start with XFC. It's a uh, it's a decent little desktop. Desktop. Uh, it'll take a bit though. So in the meantime, while that is running, I'll split the terminal and uh, we'll configure some stuff uh, beforehand. So yeah, let's uh, go. Let's split the terminal. Oh, if you want to see the, if you want to know the IP number that you're using on OpenBSD. This won't work. And maybe that's muscle memory, but 
as, 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 as old schoolers do, do this. So RE, RE0 was the nick that we used. And so now this is the IP. You can do that on the on the on the machine itself. So let's let's do become root. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, set up uh, uh, let's see uh, we already did do as uh, first we need to enable uh, we, put, we should put ourselves in the operator group so we can actually log out with uh, XFCE so uh, user mod rsg operator and then your user. Now I'm part of the operator group. Now we need to enable some services. I don't know if it already got, yeah, it already got Dbus. So you don't, uh, uh, OpenBSD does not have systemd. It has uh, init style uh, BSD in it, but they have a tool called RCCTL, which you can use to enable, disable services, start services, stop services, uh, get the status, stuff like that. So you actually use that to uh, enable something like the message bus. And then, uh, let's see, uh, APM, APMD, uh, that's for power management. Of course, including typos. Start the search services. Uh, might have enabled APMD. Oh, anyway, that's what you do. Um, so yeah, uh, those are started. Uh, let's get the logs. Of course, you can't see that because it's installing packages. Um, <coughs> yeah, this is going to take a bit. Um, yeah, it enabled. The, uh, we have. Uh, we're in the, uh, in the in the good. We're in the correct group. We have a message bus enabled. We have APMD enabled. Um, we might as well. No, we're just gonna wait for this. Um, yes, what other tricks can I show you for now? Uh, we also need a browser, but that's we, we can do that later. Um, yeah, this is going to take a while. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I could uh, I could fa fast forward uh, through this. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stop the recording and uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, restart the recording when uh, this is done installing. A few moments later. All right, we're back. <coughs> it's done. I made a typo in the, in the PKG ad. It needs, it needs to be XFCE extras with an S. So I did that. Uh, so uh, uh, it's done installing everything. So... Um, yeah, uh, a good tip to do uh, when you when you're like uh, installing a new system, and if you're new to OpenBSD, uh, is man after boot, and uh, it will give you uh, some tips. How to set a date, uh, do forwarding, uh, stuff like that, the disk mounts, etc. Oh, uh, if you want your webcam to work, uh, this might be handy. So we're gonna add those while we are here. So we can actually use our webcam. 
that she says something about uh, <coughs> about a flag you can set. Um, I'm not. Uh, 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 there's on uh, OpenBSD current there was a problem with this system that it uh, wouldn't wake from suspend. So I'm not going to do anything with suspend. Um, there's another package we can add. Uh, let's see. Yeah, well, you, you should read that at your own leisure. Um, that which is uh, OBSD 3D, which um, uh, we will use like uh, it will it will uh, lower the speed of your CPU when you're not using it. So it, it becomes dynamic. And you can enable it with RCCTL. OBSD freak. And then we can and then we can start it. There we go. Uh, as for uh, APM, oh, this uh, I freak these for fan speed. Uh, let me see my notes. Yeah. Oh, uh, another thing um, we should look at, uh, at the login.conf. This is very uh, very important uh, because the default uh, default user. It's very limited. It can only uh, well, it has like data size and max processor, max processors limits and open file limits. So, as far as I know, I am part of the wheel group, but. Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, I, I can also make myself part of the staff group. So, user mode. I want to check check something. I also would like. Oh no! Oh, that's another tweak we have to do before we can use our cameras. Uh, But we're we're in the staff group now. <coughs> um, also, so we can use our webcams. We have to I'm the only user, so this makes sense. And uh, Okay, we're part of the staff, but I'm going to give myself some more leeway here. This one has 32 max. I'll give myself 60, meg 60 megabytes. Quite a bit more processors. Uh, this should be enough. It's a Okay. Unlike uh, FreeBSD, you don't need to compile this; it just works. So, just to keep, uh, just to start fresh, we'll uh, we'll reboot. A few moments later. Okay, you should uh, see something now. As it uh, initializes the firmware for the video, and you see that it has uh, the CCTLs, all the stuff that we installed, and another cat. Oh yeah, you see, uh, you see uh, this uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, default X background, which is going to make me uh, a blurred pixelating pixelated mess. 
let's, uh, let's do something about that. So I'm going to the console. This is on the laptop. Uh, now we have to uh, use this file. Xeno DM. Then the X setup dot zero. Uh, I'm going to disable the X console. And it's asking me to install OpenBSD background, so I'll just do that. This also has another uh, advantage, which you'll see in a moment. Okay, uh, uh, RCCTL restart Xeno DM. I don't need the shell anymore. Now it's going to give you uh, a nice. Uh, a nice wallpaper. There's there going to be different wallpapers per. Uh, these are these are built in into uh, open. In the, these are in the package manager. They're just random. They're somewhere on the file system. Uh, as you can see, you don't see a login screen. That's because it's on the other screen. I'll just log in. And I'll just run my screen mirror script. And uh, now we have no uh, headache inducing uh, default XORG uh, background. Now let's uh, fix the fix the fix the font here. So now you can read this as well. Oh, that script is uh, just uh, just a uh, um, small shell script that uh, just basically uh, uses X uh, resize and rotate to put the monitors together. So uh, I can actually get it on the on the on the capture card. So, but um, we're not running X XFCE yet. So I'll just switch back to the to the terminal. So you can uh, oh, hang on. I don't have sudo. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, need to eat. Need to edit this file. Uh, this is the first uh, command that is uh, well, the first script actually that is uh, run by uh, Xeno DM. Um, yeah, so uh, you can do, uh, you can uh, uh, note that this does not need a shebang and um, it, it, it gets sourced, so you don't, need to ha don't even need to make, uh, make it executable. What I like to do is to source the profile. It sets uh, a path and a term and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it does that when you log in, when you want to set uh, environment variables for your session, you can do that here. Uh, you could also, uh, maybe if you use another shell, do something else, but uh, this is uh, nice. And uh, if you do POSIX compliant stuff, POSIX, uh, POSIX uh, shell, co shell, uh, shell scripting, it should just work. And then we should exec uh, I think like this. Yeah, that was right. right. And what I also usually like to do is, since we have uh, Dbus, uh, 
I don't have shikei. Uh, no, I don't have shikei stuff yet. So dealers alone should start their extra shikei four. Um, uh, we start Shino DM. I was going to log out. So let's. Uh, if all is well, you would see the login screen now. Oh, again, not. Okay. Um, it should start XFCE now. Right. Uh, settings, display. Mirror displays. Apply. Now you should, should see my desktop. Yes, please keep this. Uh, I myself, I like dark mode, so I'm gonna use a dark theme. And now we have a terminal here. So, we installed the desktop. Um, now we should actually install a browser. Uh, I can uh, recommend, you can use Chromium, which is basically the Google Chrome. Chrome. And uh, they also completely pledged and, uh, and unveiled uh, Chrome in uh, OpenBSD. And it actually only has access to your home, to your downloads directory in your home directory. So. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but there's another browser which I actually recommend even more. It's called Iridium. Basically, it's uh, it's uh, the Google Chrome, but with more privacy stuff, and it probably uh, it adds uh, DuckDuckGo as a default browser. So. Iridium. I can recommend it. So that uh, that's installing. Um, we should actually check if there's uh, updates. So we'll just open another terminal because we can. Uh, if you want to do uh, we, the packages we just installed are new, so it doesn't make sense if the, uh, to update packages. But if you want to, you do this. Minus U, and it's now going to probably going to wait for uh, for the uh, uh, Iridium to be installed. Yeah, fonts, goody goody. Now it's doing the browser itself. Yeah, okay, so it's almost done. Very cool. This takes a long. All right. So on the other one, it's updating. It shouldn't have any. Uh, it shouldn't have any updates. Yeah, it's going uh, through all the packages. There's no updates because we still installed everything fresh. Uh, if you want to see if the system itself, like OpenBSD has updates, you do syspatch. It just released, so it doesn't have any. If uh, OpenBSD 7.5 releases, you can do sysupgrade. And 
and it's trying for, to look for 7.5, but it doesn't exist yet. Um, if you want to switch to current, um, you can use sysupgrade minus s, but then you are running current. You have to be wary of that. Um, uh, because that's like, uh, uh, okay, many people use current and it's quite stable, but if you want a really stable system and don't mess with things too much, keep it unstable and only upgrade when a new release comes along. And that's like every six months. So it shouldn't be that bad. Uh, as for, uh, there's also another comment I would like to make. Uh, there's also ports in OpenBSD. But I would suggest not using them. For the simple reason is that uh, stuff from ports and from packages can diverge and it will can, it can give you some problems. There's a way out of that. You can actually deinstall every package on the system and reinstall everything again. Uh, that might work, but it also might not. So uh, either do only ports or stick with packages. Uh, packages are a lot quicker, I suggest sticking with packages. Uh, I, have to, I have to say that. And I think I'll wrap it up here. So what we did, we uh, configured our OpenBSD box. We did some configuring. We installed the desktop environment, in this case XFCE. Uh, we might do DWM uh, or uh, awesome WM, just let me know which one you would like to see. And um, uh, if you want to see me suck at Lua, you can do uh, you can do awesome. Uh, if you want to see me suck at C, then you can do uh, DWM. And uh, maybe I'll live stream those. I don't know yet. So yeah, that's it, guys. Take care, and I uh, hope this was uh, informative. Uh, it was uh, this was entertaining and informative. See you later.